Good morning and uh, greetings. It's, it's great to be here. It's a special feeling to stand in this place because I know this world is not our home. We're just passing through. But it's nice to have places as we are passing through that we can call at least a place that we have roots in. To stand here, I get a couple of reminders. Uh, th th this wood paneling here was, uh, my, my grandfather helped nail those up. And so uh, I feel like behind me I have some history. But in front of me I look at the nursery room there where my mom used to drag me off there. Just, I'm going to, you're going to get it, you're going to get it. So I have some history there too. Reminding me to be on my best behavior here in church. Coming to Boise is a special part of our furlough trips here back to the United States. We're in several states, several places. Uh, we, we look forward to Boise because, well, I have history here. But it's, it's kind of fun to, to go around and see the places that used to be something else. And my kids keep, get tired of me saying, oh, this used to be that. No, this, you know, this used to be that. We still see some old things that, uh, that are still the way they were. Uh, I like to, to drive by the street where we lived when I was a toddler and, and, and see if the house is still there. Uh, I like to, to try to see some familiar sights. Uh, at the same time, we get to see some things that have changed you know, where there used to be a sod farm, there's now this village thing. Uh, and it's, so, wow. And uh, it's, it's great to see all these buildings going up because uh, when, when, when I left Boise to, to move to Memphis, there wasn't much building going on. It's kind of hard times. And then all these buildings start going up. It's, it's good if you're in the building trades, I guess. Uh, and uh, one of our favorite places to go, and I want to make sure to... to visit it every time we're here, is the river. We have a beautiful river passing through the middle of our town, a green belt of parks along its length, and it's, it's just really great in the middle of a big city to have this clean water with, with you can see trout there, you can, people floating down in it, and it just, it's just so beautiful. My dad tells me he can remember a time when the Boise River was quite dirty, trash and waste floating in it and all of that. So sometimes change is good. Things do get better. It's great to, to, to feel a connection to your past at the same time to be able to look forward to something even greater. As I'm here among you, I see many familiar faces. Some of you have known me since I was a toddler. Some of you have known me in my second stage of my Boise existence, back between 86 and 88. Uh, and also I see many new faces. Some people have moved in and joined us, children. It's great to see a combination of, of old people and young people, new people and people that are familiar. It's a sign that this is a place that has roots in the past and a vision for the future. Mother's Day really captures that connection between the past and the present and the future. After all, what are our mothers? They're the ones that came before us. They're the ones that gave birth to us, right? They're the ones that we come from. At the same time, what is more forward-looking in this world than motherhood? Where a woman will undergo the challenges of pregnancy and child raising, for what? To bring a child into this world, to raise them into adulthood, so that they will carry on into the future. Who has great hopes for our children in what they will become and where they will reach in this world. And so I would like to bring a message this morning 
that causes us to look forward at the same time remembering where we came from, what brought us there, what came before us. In our text, this verse really has, has jumped out at me. Uh, it's, it's something that, that keeps me going personally in the work. A sense that I'm not just doing something just because I needed something to do, but I'm doing something that the Lord has called me to do and has equipped me to do and has planned for me to do. It doesn't make the work easier. It doesn't make it always pleasant. It doesn't make me always faithful in my job. But there is a sense of, I can't quit. I won't quit. I can't imagine doing something else. This is what I was born to do. This is what I was designed for. The words here are, we are his workmanship. Just like a child is crafted by the parenting of their mother and father, we are God's workmanship. He, he shaped us and molded us, prepared us for something. There is, there is a sense that we didn't just show up randomly. That God planned for us to be a certain way and equipped us and gave us the, the training, the background, the parenting, the community, the opportunities, the talents. All of these things, God worked. Like, like, like a builder builds a house or a designer designs equipment, or, or somebody makes a meal. There, there, is, there is a workmanship there. And that as his workmanship, he lovingly crafted us to become something. He had plans for us. I am quite grateful for this place. Because in my second phase of Boise existence. I, I came back from the Philippines to begin my adult life in the United States. Not really clear. Can you imagine? I'm 20 years old and not really sure what I'm going to do with my life. Well, I kind of had an idea in my head. I was going to be a scientist kind of guy. I was going to go into research and be a research biologist and all of that. Apparently, that wasn't quite the Lord's plan. I, I went through a phase of, of, of being a carpenter, sort of. Right, Max? Sort of. <laughs> um, it wasn't my plan. It wasn't my plan to, to, to be in the building trades. Apparently, the Lord had an, an idea there. Uh, that started me in a direction and gave me certain skills to this day, are being put to use in the work that we're doing. To this day, uh, I have the honor of working with my father uh, to, to, to build the school buildings that we're working with, to, to help with, uh, with uh, various repair things around the house. Uh, Dick Evans showed me how to change a toilet. And, you know, install one of those things. I still do that once in a while as part of my ex executive position as assistant principal. <laughs> That's what administrators do. They administrate. <laughs> also, very importantly, it was in this place where I got put on the right track of my life. You see, I grew up from a long line of teachers and preachers. So I was quite sure that what I did not want to do with my life was to be a teacher or a preacher. <laughs> well, I got asked to take a, a, a Wednesday night class and then a Sunday school class. And I found out that 
this was my calling. This, this, this is something I really, really wanted to do. And it was here in Boise, Boise State, that I got my training as a teacher and started going on the right path. Later on, I got training to be also a preacher. And, well, here I am doing what I'm doing. And so the Lord, I believe, is working. It's not an accident. These things look like coincidence to those who don't believe. To those who do believe, we see the hand of God at work. We see the hand of God in ways that sometimes we don't know at first. We can look back and say, ah, he was working. He was preparing. God is pretty smart and pretty kind and gracious to us in preparing us for these good works that we have. The passage also tells us that God prepared these works for us beforehand, that we would walk in them, that there are pathways ahead of us that the Lord cleared. If you've ever, ever been hiking in the woods, just randomly going through the woods, you know it's kind of hard, right? It's not easy to just walk through the woods. We end up looking for some path. Maybe it's a logging trail. Maybe it's, maybe it's an animal trail. Or if nothing else, the path made by water as, as it flows down a mountainside. It's usually the easiest way to get off the mountain. There are pathways prepared before us. And when you're just kind of randomly wandering around, it's hard to move and it's easy to get lost. But when you find that path, you say, ah, this is going somewhere. Well, imagine in our world, in our lives, in our living, that the Lord has prepared pathways for us, that we should walk in them, pathways to good works. How wonderful does it feel to be walking in a path that your Father had prepared before you ahead of time so that you could become what He has dreamed of you to become? It doesn't mean it's easy. It doesn't mean you don't have struggles, but it feels so comforting to know you're walking on this path. To be honest, in our work, I'm often discouraged. Sometimes I'm distracted. I guess I'm a lot like normal people. But I don't ever want to quit because I can't imagine a different thing for me. I know I could do something else if I had to. I hope I never, ever have to find out. I don't want to quit until the job is done. I don't want to, to give up with a half-finished job. And so it is so important for us to know that People such as you have faithfully supported us, prayed for us, encouraged us to do this work that we're doing. Even as you are quite busy doing the work that you're doing so that we can continue and finish. I would like to bring up to you the name of one of our native sons, Alvin Luther and Fe Luther who have labored for over 50 years in the Philippines. That's rare, by the way. The average missionary doesn't last two years in the field. And I'm sure there were many people that didn't think that Alvin Luther would last two years in the field. Well, when he went, he didn't have money for two years in the field. He'd saved up his own money and sent himself and had to come back after one year. But then he came back and went, came back and came back. And 
that is a special thing to have that kind of, of commitment to finish a job. And it is an honor for us to work alongside my mother and father in their work, my wife and my family, to help them finish what they have begun. Some things are not completed overnight. You know, a mission church has to struggle against a, a culture around it that's quite hostile to, pr to principles and practices that are Christian. We have to work with the church until they have their own leadership, until they, they take reins of their own direction. And if you leave it too early, all this work to build it up just kind of scatters away and gets reabsorbed in the surrounding area. And so we are working with them to finish this so that we can say all of this was for this purpose. And so to walk in the pathways that God has laid out for us is what every Christian should aspire to. This is not just talking to missionaries. You look at the verses before that. To all of us who have been saved by the grace of God through our faith, we have God's plan for good works laid out for us. Every one of you, God looked at you as you were a baby and dreamed great dreams for you and prepared pathways ahead of you. And you know that there are, there are ways that are not really God's plan. But when you find God's plan, then you start to sense His leading. You start to detect His preparation. You start to receive His blessing. Let me say, there is a key here. What is the key to finding those pathways? They were good works. God prepared us for good works. You want to find those pathways in your life? Seek out good works. When you're young, it may seem like, well, there's this good work, there's this good work. It all seems random. Take the opportunity in front of you, young people. If it's good, do it. Do something good. One thing good leads to another thing good. Before you know it, you're walking in the pathway that God prepared for you. We never know where, where the pathways lead because we cannot see ahead. But if you're doing good works, you're walking in the pathway that God prepared for you. And nothing is better in this world than to work for that boss. We all are going to give our lives to something. Some people give their lives for a company. Some people give their lives for a country. Some people devote their lives to earning a lot of money. Some people go for fame and fortune. What would you like to have given your life for when you look back on it? What better thing than to give your life for the service of the Lord, to devote the talents of your hands, the efforts, your energy, to, to finding that pathway that God made for you. And so, as we look back at where we came from, as we honor our mothers for having given birth to us, here's a really great way to honor your mother. Do her proud. Become something she has dreamed of for you. Become even better than what she imagined is possible. Walk in the pathways of good works that God prepared for you. Thank you so much for hearing this this morning.